So we're going to go quickly over our FLIR K50 thermal imager. Just a review before we do a hands-on drill with it. We purchased these a couple years ago. A lot lighter than our Bullard cameras were. A lot more sensitive to heat in different ranges. We're just going to quickly go over some of the features and then do a hands-on drill with it. Quick overview on thermal imaging cameras. Uh, read for yourself what they do, how they create an image. Um, they work in the infrared range of colors and the rays emitted by the tick go out, find an image, determine the relative temperature of it, and then based on that return, the camera creates an image that we see. They work on surface temperatures, not air or ambient temperatures. We've got to remember that. So we're getting temperatures on that scale based on the surface that we're pointing the camera at. So we're pointing it at a far wall in a room. We're not getting the ceiling temperature. If we're pointing it at the floor, we're not getting the ceiling temperature or the temperature of the room around us. We're just getting the temperature of that floor. So there's some limitations to the camera based on how we use it. Um, our cameras, operations and features, only a couple buttons. Um, when we're using it actually in the fire, we're not doing much unless we want to capture a picture, which we're probably not doing in zero visibility environments. If we're using it for rescue or fire attack. Um, take a quick look at the system parts here. The connectors and all that kind of stuff, again, are kind of after the fact things if we wanted to capture pictures. Probably something more for training than for actual incidents but we'll go over how to get those out of the camera and everything. Um, we all know where the truck, or, uh, the truck chargers, how that works, and docking it and, and the uh, battery and all that itself. So quickly just review that stuff on your own with the camera when you pull it out. There's different screen elements that we should probably know what they need. What they, so we have the heat detection mode. Um, that's the lowest temperature range and the highest sensitivity we have. It's good for overhaul, finding hot spots. It's a good mode to know how to put it in um, for fire investigation, just to make sure everything's out before we clear the scene on everyone. And it's really good for uh, obscure fires or concealed fires. If we have a little bit of a smoke in a structure environment situation and we can't figure out where the fire is coming from or where the heat or smoke is coming from, this is good. Or post-fire, post-extinguishment to... Uh, really zero in on hot spots. Um, it only colorizes the highest 20% of temperatures in the frame. So if you're pointing it at something and everything is within an ambient temperature range, it's only going to colorize the highest 20% of things temperature wise in that frame. So good for finding real specific hot spots, but at low temperatures relative to an actual structure fire. The search and rescue mode, optimized for maintaining high contrast, so the camera will keep a very good picture to try and find outlines of people, obviously, um, at lower temperatures relative to the room. The fire mode um, starts at a higher temperature for colorizing, so it's basically just a, it changes the screen settings a little bit. On the right-hand side there, that scale will start at a higher temperature for fire mode to colorize things. You don't get the reds and yellows until a higher temperature. The NFPA firefighting mode and the black and white firefighting mode are kind of the same thing and it's what we start in is the NFPA mode. So our, when they turn our cameras on they're going to be in number five in the NFPA mode. We'll use it for most of the stuff. It gives a pretty good picture. It doesn't over colorize the screen but it starts it at a lower temperature and it's what we use for most of what we do. And, and most of the times you're picking up the camera, you're not going to be changing modes, but this is the mode you're going to be in. Um, it does change sensitivities to a high range and a low range based on the temperature that you're in, and it does it automatically, trying to keep the best picture for you. It um, doesn't really change anything on the user's end, but it will keep a better picture, and it does have two sensitivity range functions in it that it automatically switches between in these two modes. So real quick, just going over the modes. Um, you see here it explains the different modes. The firefighting mode, we can look at that real quick. The black and white mode, 
Um, basically, this is like the old ticks without the colorization. It just gives you the shades of whites and darks. It's the same as the NFPA mode without the colorization and the temperature scale along the right hand side. It just eliminates that. Um, we got to remember also that the spot meter in the center there, that square, is basically like a, one of our hand thermometers. It gives us the temperature in the lower right hand corner is based on what that square in the center of the screen is pointed at. Also, the triangle the green in the upper left hand corner is on when it's in a mode where it will switch between high and low ranges. So the firefighting mode, the rescue or the NFPA mode, and then the black and white mode will have the green triangle in the upper corner, meaning that it's going to switch between high and low range automatically. The heat detection mode and search and rescue mode down in the lower left hand corner of the blue, you won't have the green triangle up in the top, and that means it's fixed in the high sensitivity range when it's in that mode. Again, nothing that's too critical, it'll do it on its own. Not going to really get into those modes and change the camera before we enter our building anyhow because we're setting an FBA, but just as good to know. The last thing real quick, number six up at the top, the green uh, caution sign here will show up when the camera is in such a high heat environment that it's going to shut down soon. I think it gives you about three minutes from the time this this shows up here in number six, the, uh, the hazard sign up there. Probably should never have that show up because we're going to start melting equipment. If that shows up, I think it's in the 500 plus degree range Fahrenheit that that shows up and the camera will start to shut down within three minutes of that showing up. So if that shows up, we're in something that's too hot and we need to get out. Or there's a problem with the camera. We should probably figure that out as well. Just quickly reading over, you can pause and look at the other modes here. This is just from the operations manual of the Clear K50. For saving an image and viewing it, um, that trigger on the front of the camera, when you click it, you save an image. It goes up to 200 in the archive. As soon as you hit 200, the oldest image goes away and the newest image takes its place. Um, for viewing saved images, this is the operation on the right to get into the archives through using the mode button and again from the first slide to this slide you can figure out how to get into that and then how to view and save your image just pause it and take a look at this if you need or refer to the manual which will also be posted on the mentorfiretraining.com website taking care of the camera just like our masks essentially use a warm water and a weak detergent um, soak it down don't get it super wet Obviously, it, it is explosion-proof and, and waterproof, but clean it down gently. Try not to scratch the lenses. Same with all our other equipment. Um, they say use cotton wool. Mostly on the lens, you can use a... Uh, our truck towels will be fine for that, and you can use um, gauze pads as well. It will work real well for that. So that's it for a quick overview on the FLIR K50 thermal imager that we carry. Once you complete this video, look over your camera, you can uh, go to the training site, go ahead and view the tech drill video on the website, uh, follow, through, follow along with the video, so everyone do it the same way that was done in the video, do a drill report when you're done, and thank you.